praise you. Come on, put a line in the sand. Hey, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. All that we have, we praise you, Lord. Hey, we praise you, Lord. Hey, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh, for lifting us up. We praise you, Lord.
gonna burn for you. I'm gonna burn. I'm gonna burn for you. I'm gonna burn. I'm gonna burn for you, Jesus. Come on, Pastor Church, let's sing that out loud. Burn. I'm gonna burn for you. I'm gonna burn. I'm gonna burn for you. I'm gonna burn. I'm gonna burn for you. Come on, Jesus. Can we make a declaration tonight? I don't care what the devil may say. I don't care what the devil may do. Yeah. As for me and my house, we will burn for you. Yeah. What the devil may say. Don't care what the devil may do. As for me and my house, we will burn for you. Yeah. I don't care what the devil may say. No. I don't care what the devil may do. Hey. As for me and my house, we will burn for you. Come on, speak it over your family. Hey, hey, hey. I don't care what the devil may say. I don't care what the devil may do. Be a city on a hill. We will burn for you. We will burn for you. 
We will burn for you. We will burn for you. We will burn for you, Jesus. We will burn for you. 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 Come on, dig deep in that heart. We will burn for you. 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 For only you. For only you. For only you, God. The old things don't have a hold on me. I'm going to burn, 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 Lord, for you. Oh, my appetite for you. for what I say.
How many love to worship? How many love to worship? Jesus, we bless you. Let your kingdom come in power. I'm looking for the prayer team. Where's the prayer team at? That's everybody standing here right now. Come on. Father, we pray right now for the White House. We pray from the church house to the White House. We pray. Let there be a revolution, God, in the government, God. Let the fire of God fall in the White House. Let the fire of God move. Whatever man sits in the seat of presidency over this country, we declare you are influenced by the Holy Ghost. We declare that you will have dreams and visions by God. We declare the will of God. The heart of the king is in the, is in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it whichever way he wishes. We decree the influence of the kingdom of heaven over the United States of America. Come on, somebody help me pray. We pray right now. We pray right now over businesses, businesses that people would rise up with Christian businesses. You would give them ideas, God. You would give them promotions, God. You would give them connections, God. We pray for the business mountain. Somebody say, we're going to take the mountain. We're going to take the mountains. Come on, come on. We pray for the media mountain, those called the media. We pray in the name of Jesus, God. Rise up people out of our church, God, that you give them platform, that they can tell many people about Jesus, God, through social media. Come on, we pray instead of a bunch of whiny baby stuff on, the, on Facebook, there's going to be people preaching the fire of God on Facebook. We decree the fire of God's going to fall on Facebook. We decree people are going to rise up and get a burning, fiery word every morning on Facebook, every Release to their friends and family, God. We say we take the mountain of media in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. We pray for the school system right now. We pray for the educational mountain right now. We pray for the elementary schools, the preschool. We pray for the middle schools. We pray for the high schools, God. Invade the schools, God. That people wouldn't, the kids wouldn't cower back in fear. Give them a holy boldness, God. Give them a wisdom, God. Give the kids a creativity, God, to put you on the display in the school, God. I pray that students would come together unabashedly and they would pray and seek God in the school. They would form groups and they would pray and seek God in the school. Come on, come on. We pray like when the when Jesus people movement hit, that you would come again like that, God. Come through the schools. Come through the colleges, God. Fire of God falling in the colleges right now. Come on. We pray about the religious mountain. Okay, I need some help on this one. We pray about that mountain called religion. Come on. We pray, Holy Ghost, visit the churches. Visit the churches. 
I pray holy fire in the Baptist church. I pray holy fire in the Catholic church. I pray holy fire in the Methodist church. We pray in the Anglican church. Come on, we pray God visit your people. They're going to church to meet with you, God. And we pray they will find you there. And we say down with the spirit of religion that blocks man from God. We pray to hell with religion and to heaven with relationship with Jesus. We pray the fire of God fall in the local churches. Come on, somebody. We pray the fire of God fall in the region and the churches right now. We pray breakthrough in the church. Breakthrough in the church. Breakthrough in the church. Breakthrough in the church. Somebody help me. Breakthrough in Passion Church. Revival in Passion Church, God. Sin revival in Passion Church, God. Sin revival in Passion Church, God. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, come on. We pray the fire of God. We pray the fire of God in the church, God. Glory, glory. We pray in, in, in the arts, in entertainment, God. Jesus would manifest. Come on. How many are seeing God move in the, in the arts and the media? And I'm talking about movies that have come out. We pray, God, you would manifest who you are. I pray that movies would be created about Daniel. I pray high-level high level movies would, would come out about the book of Revelation, God. We pray that it would be like a blockbuster hit, God, about stories of men and women in the Bible. How many would pray that for real? Oh, I got, a, I got one for you right now. I pray, God, that you would visit Eminem and he would get saved. I pray you would visit Beyonce and she would get saved, God. She would return to her original roots, God. We pray, I, I got something right now. I pray those that are right now in Hollywood, singers and musicians, come on, and actors that were originally in church, we pray you would come back to your senses. We pray you would come back. You would repent to your first love. I pray with the prayers of grandmas and mamas and fathers. We pray and friends, we join with their prayers and we pray let there be a harvest in Hollywood, God. Come on, I don't know if y'all believe in that. Holy Ghost come like a rushing mighty wind. We pray, God, let Passion Church be a house of prayer. Now, y'all realize if we pray this, that you're, you're volunteering to show up for prayer, right? Right? So we pray, Lord, make our house a house of prayer. Passion Church is a house of prayer. That there will be prayer every day in the church. I got less amens now. <laughs> We pray such a wave of the glory would come as we begin to commit to be here every day, God. And listen, some of you may not be able to come every day. That's okay. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna set it up to where one day soon there's prayer. Every, right now there's prayer every day in the church right now for the past week. And how many would like to see prayer every day in the church? Well, and just different leaders in rotation and people come for that hour of power. Come on, that hour of prayer. How many of that you're better when you pray? When you come out of prayer, you're stronger. You're more free. You're full of fire. Amen. Religion doesn't save man. Amen. Jesus saves man. And until we meet with him, we're not going to experience that saving power. Amen. Can somebody give God a shout of praise? You guys all right tonight? I love that. We worship. We worship. We worship. This morning, say it with me, the burning vision of Jesus. The burning vision of Jesus. I'm going to talk about something that's so important that I can't just say it once. i got to keep talking about it. So we're going to probably talk about the, the vision of Jesus also on Sunday. Uh, how many know that you're never stronger? Can you guys flip the light switch back there behind the computer? How many know that you're never stronger than whenever you are burning with a purpose to run with God? And have you ever had a purpose in God when you were doing, whether it was ministry or feeding the homeless or praying for the sick? Or have you ever done that before, anybody in this room? You ever been on a missions trip? You'd never be more, you may never be stronger than in that moment whenever you're burning with a vision to do something for God. The purpose of God on the earth. Amen? Amen. And, you know, people, people, many people, many, many, thousands, millions maybe of people have, are talking about having visions of Jesus. But how many out of the millions that are having visions of Jesus have the vision of Jesus? Only those making disciples, only those winning souls have the vision of Jesus. And I want to present to you that in our, in our American culture, man, it's infected our gospel. And we want a gospel that makes us feel good even when we see Jesus. Holy Ghost, make me feel good. But when it comes to the Great Commission, go and make disciples. Come on, how many are ready for that? That's the vision of the man Jesus, is to go and get your hands dirty. Come on, get over yourself and reach some souls. When I first began to uh, witness to people, how many, I, I was scared to witness to people about Jesus. Back in the day, 
You know, I was still, I was still smoking two packs of Marlboro 100s a day. It's about seven days ago. And every time I would go to the store to buy cigarettes, I'm just kidding, this is 18 years ago. But I would go to the store and buy cigarettes, and I would just witness to the, uh, to the lady at the uh, deal and say, Jesus loves you, all awkward, because I, I, you know, I, hadn't, I hadn't done it before. And they would just kind of look at me like I was stupid. You know, I never knew I would be a preacher. I was just doing what God told me to do. And later I found out that they call that an evangelist. I, I called it a Christian. You know, make it, being a fool for Christ. I thought that was in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Like representing Jesus to people even though you were scared. I mean, I would rather throw away my, my, my panic pills and just begin to witness about Jesus, wouldn't you? Okay, y'all ain't with me today. <laughs> but I'm saying, if you do Jesus stuff, what happens? You begin to burn with a fire, not just when it's hyped up, man. You burn with a fire walking down the road because you're part of a vision. Amen. Come on, man. So today, tonight, we're going to talk about the burning vision of Jesus and uh, what he really had a vision to do. Amen. And I present to you that you would never be healthier in your spirit or in your life than when you're a part of the vision of Jesus. And, and can I just be straight with you? When you're part of the team, when you're, when you're making disciples, how many in here are making disciples right now? How many in here are currently mentoring someone? How many are currently being mentored by someone? then you're a biblical Christian. Amen. How many in here are reaching souls? Raise your hand. Come on. How many in here has ever won a soul to Jesus? Come on. I want to challenge somebody for to real grassroots Christianity. Come on. Amen. How many, I'm, I'm just being cheeky. How many realize that we have to, how many would say this with me? We have to be able to win souls without changing the gospel. Can I, can I meddle a little bit? How many realize that I, I think we have to be careful about preaching a gospel that people will accept because it doesn't make them mad. Y'all are like, where am I going with this? We have to be able to preach the gospel without changing it to get people to accept it. Does that make sense, guys? Right now, we're dealing with a situation on planet Earth to where if you, you preach the gospel a certain way, your church will grow really fast. Is that wrong to say that? Is that wrong to do that, Tom? I don't know if I should do that. But how many want to have an unadulterated gospel? Does that make sense, what we're saying? Like, I'm serious. I want to know all of the book. I want to know Jesus said that he said, uh, teach them everything that I have taught you. And he says, and lo, I'm with you to the end of the age. That was the end of the Great Commission. Teach them all things that I have taught you. All things that I've commanded you. That's what he said. Say with me, go and make disciples of all nations. That's all colors. Baptizing them. Come on. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, we were baptizing. I'm just want to be on Regis. I like to. And we were baptizing people, and some lady got super mad and told all of our people they were being baptized, that they were baptized wrong because we said you're baptized in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit because they didn't say the name of Jesus. There's like this huge doctrinal thing. I'm like, dude, are you even making, are you even making disciples? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Good Lord. We have to be able to preach the gospel without changing it. Amen. If we're changing the gospel to make converts, the people that are accepting it are not even converted. Amen? How can we have a vision or encounter Jesus without having the vision of Jesus? How can we feel the Holy Spirit on our skin? Come on. We can feel the peace of God in our heart. We experience Jesus, but yet we don't have the vision of Jesus. We have the experience of Jesus, but not the vision of Jesus. How many want to have the vision of Jesus? Well, I believe that in our country that we're, we're so, it's so like egocentrical. Like it's so much about how I feel and it's entitlement, right? Like I, you owe me and you know what I'm saying? Like don't tell me what I don't want to hear. That there's so, how many would agree that that's really a, an issue in our nation? I know this is a small Wednesday night service, but let's get into something real quick. That's a real problem in our nation right now. You're going to watch and see that younger, the, the, the generations coming up, that sometimes they just refuse to hear anything but what they want to hear. Amen? When, hey, when I was growing up, man, I didn't, my mom would tell me stuff I didn't want to hear. It'd be like, tough, buddy. <laughs> Back in the day when I went to school, the coach could whip you. Amen? Amen? How many come up from that generation? You don't mess around, the coach is going to whip you, man. And I know there's probably someone in here that got abused, and you're like, well, don't talk about that because, hey, I was abused. I was kicked in the back with a steel toe boot. So I understand that. So I'm not saying, yes, we'll, we'll abuse people, you know. But I'm saying, how many of that we're in a generation that's like, don't tell me anything that I don't want to hear. Amen? How many think that could cause a problem with the gospel? Because Paul said, if, if, if the gospel is not offending you, there's no cross in it. Wow. 
because of the way that our country is, and a lot of the, hot, the, the more rich the country is, the more money there is, the more it's entitled, like, don't tell me what I don't want to hear. Have y'all noticed that? Have you ever been outside of the country to see this? And it's like, in that situation, I'm not going to receive the gospel the way that it is. The gospel is basically like, if one died for all, then all died. Yay, I, I want to die. That's what I want to do. I don't want to crucify my flesh. Amen. I want to live the way that I want to do, and, and I want to accept God in my comfort zone. I want to ask you a question. Anybody in this room, have you ever been in a position in your life where you knew who Jesus was, you accepted him, but because you didn't want to be uncomfortable, you were trapped in sin? Has it ever happened to you? Can we be honest? And, and so, man, that's, there's, if there's no cross, there's no freedom, man. Amen? Okay, I'm taking too long on that, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. I have a mini novel that I'm supposed to preach in like 25 minutes. So I don't know how we're going to do this. <laughs> but I have a lot of, a lot of revelation that, uh, man, I just got this. And uh, I could, when I was getting this revelation that I'm going to talk about tonight, I could feel a tangible presence on me. And, uh, and I think it's, it's just wonderful. How many love the fact that God will visit you and, and show you and illuminate the scriptures to you? Amen. So here we, here we roll. So number one, can we put number one up? You are never stronger than when you stand with the purpose of Jesus consuming your heart. How many have ever heard, had a purpose to do something for God and it burned in your heart? Well, I'm here to tell you, if, you, if it's ever happened to you, I want you to remember. I want you to remember what, the, what it was like when it happened because God's about to set you on fire. And fire is not about just getting excited in a church service or just praying as hard as you can when nobody's looking. That's part of it. But if you don't connect that to uh, action, then you're going to lose the power of what you're doing. That's like a car with no transmission. How many know what a transmission is? A transmission takes the power of that engine and puts it to the wheels, and the wheels create movement. How many realize that if you don't, have, if you don't make disciples, hello, if you don't make disciples and win souls, you got no transmission. You can have all the power in the world, but the stuff ain't right inside of you, and you can't figure out why, but God said, I created you for the Great Commission. Am I right? This is real, guys. And this message, I will not stop preaching. This is something that we will talk about for like three or four months, and then we're going to release probably eight new small groups that are on a mission to like win souls and make disciples. Amen? Come on, somebody. I'm fired up about this. Say it with me. Strength comes from purpose. Divine strength comes from divine purpose. Anytime that we have faltered or failed, we were distracted from God's purpose. I want you to think about it in your life. Anytime you faltered or failed. Because how many know that if you're messing up, especially after you got saved, the devil will show up and say, well, see, look at you. You failure. You can't be a Christian. You can't even get it right. You might as well just take the back seat. Amen. You might as well give up. Anybody ever felt like giving up? You see? But where do we have, where, do, where are we going to go, man? Like, where are we going to go? But you've never faltered or failed in the middle of the fire of the purpose of God for your life. You'll never falter or fail in that moment. And I want to tell you right now that it's, you need to pray. People need to have prayer lives. You should pray 30, 30 minutes to an hour a day. You should be in prayer every day. Every day. Not out, of, not out of, it's not the 11th commandment. It's not law. It's just common sense, man. If you don't eat and drink, then you're going to die. Amen. If you don't eat and drink, you're going to die. Amen. But the reality is that you can pray. There's a prayer movement out there where people are praying but not making disciples. you got a big engine. you got no transmission. I don't care what kind of tires you got. You're going nowhere. Oh, I know that's offensive, but I feel like the Holy Spirit wants to get some people and begin to move. Amen? Come on. Especially if, you've been, if you're the, a person that prays and seeks God, God's about to take you, and you're about to make massive impact on planet Earth like a meteorite making a massive mark on the Earth. That's what I want to see. Amen? I want to give the devil hell. Anybody with me? <laughs> Anytime that we have faltered or failed, we were distracted from God's purpose. Am I right? David got distracted when he saw Bathsheba. How many know about David and Bathsheba? He got distracted, right? Did you know that David wasn't even supposed to be there? The Bible said it was the time when kings went out to war. And I recently was talking to some friends of ours. and like, we have a friend that they're like, we don't want to make, we don't, why has everything got to be war? Uh, because you're being attacked. You can lay down and take some pills. Come on, let your boyfriend beat you up. Or you can rise up, suck it up. Come on, quit playing the victim and say, my God, Jesus died to win the war. I'm going to begin to fight. He died for me. 
I'm going to fight for him. Amen. I'm going to fight for my kids. I'm not going to lay down to play the victim. Amen. David got distracted when he, when he messed up. He faltered and he failed when he messed up. I got a long way to go, but I want to throw it out there. How many know that David, being the, a prophet king that wrote more of the scripture than most, most other people, most other authors, was a prophet and a king. A prophet and a king. Considered a, sac- a holy man. But yet he committed adultery, then he killed the man. Amen? He killed Bathsheba's husband. Anybody know the Bible? The only reason why that happened was because David got away from his purpose. When kings go out to war, that's when David was sitting there looking out the window and there was Bathsheba. Today we got a cell phone with a bunch of Bathshebas on it. Am I talking to anybody? Come on, today we got no fear to date anybody we want to because they winked at us in church. And I am living proof that if you date the wrong person, your life is going to be tore up from the floor up. And you are going to, you're going to greatly regret it. Amen? Help us, God. Our purpose is to give away what God has given us. Has anybody received Jesus? Has anybody received salvation? Has anybody received freedom? Man, I'm not going to do this to you, but how many of there's a parable about the talents? I'm going to come hard, okay? It's Wednesday. How many leaders, how many potential leaders do we have in the room? How many potential leaders do we have in the room? There's a, a parable about the talents. How many of the, in the parable of the talents that, uh, that a man came from a faraway country and he gave away a ta- one talent to one guy, two talents to another guy, and five talents to another guy? The guy that had two talents went and he, he, and he used the two talents to get two more. So he had four talents. The guy that had five talents, I don't have time to tell the story, but I'm going to do it anyway. And he, and he invested and he, and he, and he you know, made business and he came back and he made five talents more. So that dude had ten talents. The guy that had one talent actually got real cheeky with the master and said, you know what? I knew that you were an austere man and you sowed. You, you wanted to reap where you haven't sowed. How many know that we're talking about God now? giving the talents and we're talking about the children of God are receiving talents from God he did nothing with the talent did you know that in Matthew 25 in that version he was cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth yes. moving on <laughs> moving right along <laughs> come on come to passion church where you were here the, you were here the truth <laughs> amen <laughs> so we are a spiritual transmission amen We've, we've got to get that power and that glory and that grace that God gave us and start giving it away and start moving forward in our life. Amen? How many know that you will die in stagnation? We've got to grow. We've got to grow forward. Number two, let's go. So when we exalt the Lord, he fills us with the power for a purpose. I'm going to do Isaiah 6, verse 1 again. How many have learned to, or beginning to learn to exalt the Lord? And you might come to church and be like, man, why are all these people jumping around, lifting their hands, talking about we worship, we worship? It's called biblical Christianity. It's called lifting up the Lord. It's called let the Lord get bigger and let me get smaller. It's called I want to worship. It's called I want to love on my God, and this is how we do it. We worship him, amen. Say it with me. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah 6.1. I'm going to do it again. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Sitting on a throne, set high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. What's the temple? What's the temple? We are the temple and the churches. You're right. Say it with me. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, we know the church is right. That's a good answer. But we are also a temple. Did you know that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? I want you to see this with me. Can I, I'm going to say something really deep, so don't miss this, okay? Because whenever you get this, like, some of your hair will fall out. Watch this. <laughs> So get some Rogaine or something before I tell you. But anyway, so it's going to be like, pow. <laughs> so when the Lord is high and lifted up, something fills you. What was it? What was it? The train of his robe. Yes, the Holy Spirit, but it was the train of the robe. What does the train of the robe represent? Say it would be righteousness. Did you, the, the Bible said in the book of Revelation, that, you know, I'm going to, you don't have to skip there, uh, uh, Casey, you don't have to do that, but I'm just going to throw that at you early. In Revelation, it says 19, verse 8, and to her it was granted, say with me, her, that's the church, and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen, say it, is the righteous acts of the saints. I want to say this a couple of times so that it, so that it resonates. I'm going to say something really deep, okay? Do you know that righteousness and holiness are not the same, Right? Holiness is a state of being. 
Righteousness has to do with action. If you're not taking the right actions, you're not going to come into righteousness. Did you know that righteousness means that God can look at it and he can't find any fault with it? I want, have you ever felt like you were dirty on the inside? Righteousness is the opposite of that. You will feel so clean on the inside that when you will feel really clean on the inside and you will feel power on the inside. Have you ever felt clean on the inside by the Lord? That's called the righteousness of God. So what happened is God basically showed me that you, whenever you, whenever you worship the Lord, watch this, and you lift it, not just worship in a service, but in your daily life, you're like, Lord, you, you, I, you are my priority. I'm putting you first. You are high and exalted in my life. That the right standing of Jesus fills your heart. Do, how many could imagine how clean Jesus would feel having never sinned? The power of righteousness is the same power as the power of resurrection. Righteousness is so powerful that if you were if you were struck if you if I stru- if you were struck dead you would get back up, because the wages of sin is death. So if you haven't sinned, you can't even die. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying right now? The wages of sin is death. Amen. That means sin produces death. It produces it. If you've never sinned, you can't die. That's why Jesus, when he was crucified, he got up, folded his clothes, and left. Say with me, the power of righteousness. I'm going to say it again because this this hit me so hard. The power of God came on me. When we exalt the Lord, it's not about just a vision. It's a transmission. God's trying to, he's trying to release the power of the engine of his power and his grace to the earth and, and create a movement on the earth. How does he do it? Because he's giving you the right standing of Jesus. He's pouring the right standing of Jesus into you. Is anybody getting this? Let me tell you something. Addiction will run like a scalded dog from you as the right standing of Jesus manifests in your heart. Sexual addiction will flee from you like a shadow when right standing of God stands in your heart. Let me tell you something. People will fight for their sins until they were cleansed, and then they will know their true identity. And we'll say, my God, just make me clean like you, Jesus. Because I know that that's my true identity is to be like my Father in heaven. Fill me with the right standing of Jesus. How many of that God can fill you with the right standing of Jesus? Is anybody picking this up? So you are the temple. You are made, you are made for God's agenda. Isaiah's vision ended up in him being sent. Some people are like, oh, I had a vision like Isaiah. No, you didn't. Because that boy, had an, he had a vision, and then, he, and then he ran off and he began to preach to the lost. In fact, he preached to the, the equivalent of the church, actually. So if my vision doesn't compel me to touch other people, then I had the power, and I, and I lost it because I had no transmission. It never connected to the earth. Does that make sense? God is about a movement where one person could be multiply more than the stars in the sky. God is about a movement where one person could multiply so many times you could not count the people. Come on, I know somebody's picking this up right now. But you're not going to multiply unless you get the power to make the wheels move. See, what I'm preaching is not a one-night sermon. This is an internal revelation that I can't let go of it. This is like fire on the inside of me. So you are made to be filled with God. Can anybody say amen to that? We need to become thirsty and more thirsty. Come on. How many? You're not going to get filled with something you're not thirsty for. I was in a rush to get to church today, but I was like, man, I want one of those cucumber Gatorades. And I was about to, like, whip the car around to pull over because we were in the hot sun. And I was like, man, I just need some, you know, (laughs) you ever get tired of drinking water? But you're not going to drink something you're not thirsty for. Anybody ever been thirsty before? How many want God to make you thirsty? Come on. Break out the salt lick, God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Say, well, you are made. Say, I'm made to be filled with God. Come on. So we need to become so thirsty. Amen. Matthew 5, 6. Y'all know what I'm going to do. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. How many want to be hungry for thirst for righteousness? Like, don't tell me about righteousness. I like the way that I am. And I'm going to come and change the whole church. My friend, you can't change the gospel because if you succeeded, then there would be false converts. Say it would be blessed. 
are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Can somebody give God a mighty shout of praise? Matthew 6, 33. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added to you. Guys, y'all realize that you should get that tattooed on the side of your face. I'm just kidding. Don't do it. I know a guy that will do it for free if you do it on your face. I'm messing with you. Don't do it. (laughs) If we sought God and... Because we say, seek the Lord and everything will come. That's not what it said. It said, seek God and his righteousness. That means I got to come to God knowing that I'm dirty, but God can clean me more cleaner than any soap can ever get me, man. And I got to say it boldly, knowing that I'm not without sin. I'm not a perfect Christian, but I know the one that can cleanse me from within. Amen. So I know that. How many have the revelation of this? So I'm going to seek the righteousness. How many are going to seek the righteousness? See, don't be scared. Say me, don't be scared. People get scared and they don't seek the righteousness of God. What are you scared about? I know people that fight anybody, but they're scared to seek righteousness. What's wrong with you? You scared? Come on. But I'm dirty. That's why you came to the shower, because you're dirty. That's why you got to seek the righteousness. But I messed up last night. That means you ain't got it yet. Keep on seeking it. Come on. Seek the righteousness. God knows. God knows what you go through. God's not going to kick you while you're down. That's what other Christians do. God's going to lift you up and he's going to go, come on, my son. Come on, my daughter. Keep seeking it because that's not what you were, what you thought you were in the world. What you really are is righteous and clean. And you are my son and my daughter with a purpose divine. I don't know what number that is. Number three. (laughs) Anybody know an eye doctor? So can y'all say with me, when you burn with God's purpose, you experience, come on, what do you experience? Right standing of Jesus. My God, somebody ought to give God a mighty shout out. If you're picking this up right now, how many know somebody that's a pretty righteous person? Well, you don't know anybody that's as right as Jesus. And what God's saying is, I'm not making you clean like Grandma was. I'm making you so clean that you look like Jesus. Come on. I'm giving you the same right standing as Jesus has. I saw the Lord high and lifted up and the train of his robe sitting on a throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. You are the temple. The robes are the righteous acts of the saints, the righteousness of Jesus. Say with me, God, fill me with the right standing of Jesus. Man, if you're getting that, give God a mighty shout of praise. Biblical righteousness means if God's looking at it, he can't find anything wrong with it. Come on, somebody. The devil didn't forget. Your family might not have forgotten. But if God's looking at it, he don't see nothing wrong with it. Come on, somebody. That ought to get somebody excited, man. The world is a liar. Amen? Let's do it again. Revelation 19.8. Can y'all say it with me? And to her, this is the church, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, Clean and bright for the fine linen is what, guys? The righteous acts of the saints. Now, can I tell you something? That's not me just in my prayer closet going, Jesus, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you. It starts there, but that's not righteousness. Righteousness is when you take the Jesus that you love and give it to somebody dying, somebody going to hell, somebody living in a living hell, somebody that doesn't know him. Am I right? That's when you didn't just have the vision of Jesus You didn't just have a vision of Jesus. You got the vision of Jesus. See, Isaiah in in chapter 6, if y'all read that, he saw Jesus, but then he said, who will you send? Send me. God said, amen, go and preach. They're not going to listen to you, but you're going to preach my word, amen. And he touched his lip, and and he gave him the gift of prophecy. Come on, is that not cool or what? How many want God to use you? You realize what I'm saying, right? You're never going to be as clean as you are when you're burning with a purpose to tell, to tell the message of Jesus, to give the message of the gospel, to make, to win souls. Jesus really only came to do three things. And I know y'all can, we can battle it on the side after church. He came to win souls. He came to make disciples. He came to, to, uh, he came to give us a, uh, I didn't figure out a way to word this. He came to demonstrate what it looks like to have intimacy with God. Say it with me, intimacy with God, soul winning, discipleship. Like what about signs, wonders, and miracles, and healing, and deliverance? All that is is accessories to those three. 
You cannot get with God and meet with God for real. I'm talking about get in the presence of God and not come out and miracles happen. I'm going to tell you right now, you can't do it. Mark my words. I'm not talking about getting in prayer and you're really kind of caught up in your own thing and you're th thinking about how you haven't fed the dog yet. And when you're, at, when you're in prayer, the question is, where are you in prayer? Are you with the Father? Because the Father said, I'll be there in the secret place. This is in Matthew 6, 6. You can jot this down. Jesus said, when you go into your prayer, and you go into your, your, your house, close your door, and that's where the Father will be in the secret place. Am I right? So what happens when you meet with the Father? Well, the same thing that happened to Jesus. You cannot come out of the presence of God and not, have, and not be miracles happening. And I know y'all are looking at me like, I'm, am, I, am I telling you the truth? How many miracles have we seen in this church? Uh, what was it? Uh, Sunday, cricket, I mean grasshopper, Jeremy came up and he was like, my mouth's hurting the whole time. He said, how many, he said, it, he, I don't know, he told me his mouth was hurting for six months. I'll get him to tell his testimony on Sunday. He ran up and he grabbed my hands and squeezed them real hard and put them on his face. And he just squeezed my hands just like this. The power of God ended up coming out of my hands. He said he felt fire come into his face. He was knocked out on the ground and he said all the pain left out of him. But do you understand that? I know when I say that, people are like, oh, could that really happen? I mean, could the Bible be really real? I mean, could it be that you do Bible stuff and you get Bible results? Could you take a, an ex-needle junkie full of tattoos and he could seek God just like Peter did in the Bible and he had the same kind of results? I'm here to tell you that God is a manifestation of miraculous power. And when you meet with him, you accidentally, miracles will accidentally happen. Come on, and it may not be a healing miracle, but it might be a financial miracle. It might be a restoration miracle. It might be a deliverance miracle. But miracles will happen when you meet with the one that is a miracle. God is a miracle. We are becoming the right standing of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Say it with me again. For he who made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. How many know that Jesus carried all the sin of the weight of the world? He carried all the sin. Amen? So that we could become the righteousness of God. What does that mean? Did you know what he's really saying? So that we could become the right standing of Jesus. Do you realize that? That means your friends will look at you and say, that's what it looks like to walk in righteousness. That's power right there. That's why the world is making fun of the church because the church doing the same stuff the world does. And like all you did was get me in a pyramid scheme to sit me down next to 10,000 other people and tell me the same stuff of how pretty I am. And now my life hasn't changed. And the rest of the world's like, yeah, we, we're not going to go line up for a Ponzi scheme and pile up tens of millions of dollars so that a couple of people can have a job to do. Am I telling the truth? Some people are like, you know what? If it's not changing me, then why would I be there? Do you guys know that when people walk in, in righteousness, it, it radically wrecks people. It wrecks them. They'll either run to you to be changed or they'll run away from you or they'll talk bad about you on Facebook. Okay, don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Experiencing righteousness. Somebody say experience it. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. When you experience righteousness, it's like experiencing the spirit of truth. And I, I already know, and I'm a, I, I'm a Cajun, so I, will, I, will, I kind of like to fight it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not running away from confrontation. And I will tell you this, for those of you that think that you have a better way to do Christianity, that people won't badmouth you, you try walking in power to cast out demons and see if people won't slander you. Try it. You know what I mean? If people aren't slandering you, I'm questioning, are you walking in the power to cast out demons? Because the day that you do, people will start talking. I mean, devils will come out of every direction. Do you want that? People are like, well, I don't want to fight. I just want to have a happy life. Well, then you won't reach any souls, and they'll go to hell, and their blood will be on your hands. I mean, you came to Wednesday night, amen? <laughs> Matthew, you ready? Do the Matthew. 622. The lamp of the body is the eye. If, therefore, your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Shadow will be light as vision. I want vision. Proverbs 28. I, I know that I get the same verses all the time. Do the next verse. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Say it with me. Where there is no vision... The people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. What did he just say? The reason why you can't get your life right is because you don't have light in your eyes. Am I right? 
that's a fun thing to acknowledge because I because I have everybody nobody's perfect, but I like to know the answer. I like to know that really what I'm missing is the light in my eyes. What is the light in my eyes? Y'all know that the Hebrew for that is the prophetic revelation. The light in my eyes is I got to know what to do. Do you see what I'm saying? So Christians that don't know what to do with their Christianity, they don't know how to minister to someone else. They don't have light. Does that make sense? You don't have light just because you saw the Lord. That works in the very beginning. But have you ever found that until you give the Lord away to somebody else, and you're just trying to keep yourself in abstinence, abstinence in and of itself is is good old religion. But that ain't transforming you. In fact, you'll get so proud and egotistical about how long you've abstained from things. Am I not right? Is that not right? And I will pat you on the back because I, I don't want to attack, but I want to say, hey, what about the vision? What about getting Jesus to people? Guys, could that be real? Could it be real? Could it be real? Could it be a reality that the day that we fall away, the times that we're failing in secret and nobody knows, is because we're distracted from the vision that God gave us. It's because we're distracted from the vision that Jesus himself had. So your prayer life is important because why? Because you can't give away what you don't have. How many Christians react? How many Christians reach souls? How many Christians make disciples? I want you all to think about this. Prophecy, healing, deliverance are only means to an end. Without learning to have some priorities that... Do you guys know that if we don't have the same priorities of Jesus, we're not going to have the same results in our Christianity? Say with me, priorities. Anybody in business in this room or anybody uh, invest money or anything like that? Like you have to have priorities. Like this has to be a priority. Like saving money is my priority. If I I don't have a priority of saving money, then I don't have any money. And I'm waiting for the tire to pop on the car. Then I'm going to be calling somebody, hey, somebody pick me up. I had no plan. Right? And that's how your, our spiritual life can be. I don't know what happened, man. The devil just showed up. Jezebel showed up, and I went on a date with her. Now I'm all screwed up. I'm jacked up. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. I don't know. She came at me like a spider monkey, and I don't know what happened. But one happened, one thing led to another. And I'm like, well, you wouldn't have even gotten in the car with Jezebel if you would have been burning with a vision from Jesus. Come on, man. Is this right? Without learning to have the same priorities that Jesus has, Everything else can be lost. Watch this. The same as new wineskin in an old wineskin. New wine in an old wineskin. People try to use that for some supernatural revelation, and it's true. It works for that, but it also works for this. You can get all the Jesus you want. The Holy Ghost can come upon you, lay you flat on the ground, but you don't win souls. You don't make disciples. You did nothing. You lost it. I'm telling you, the difference between one, one guy that has an anointing on his hands to touch people is that he uses the anointing. That's the only difference. Can I, can I just share this with y'all? Some people are like, well, I went to the conference and the fire of God fell. Well, then you should touch others and fire should come out of your hands. You got the same Jesus, don't you? But you know the difference? Is it, is it, it's the mentality. I, I am not a black hole. I, everything, everything that comes to me goes out from me. If I go to a conference, I've already scheduled another meeting to go release it all. Does that make sense? So in your spirit, you're like, I'm no different than any other man, right? And if other men have walked in healing power and blessing and they've walked in righteousness, then so will I. But I'm going to take what I get and I'm going to use it the same way that Jesus did. I'm going to use what I have or Jesus said it will be taken away from me. Is this making any sense? So here, real quick, y'all, y'all got five minutes? <laughs> y'all didn't say anything. I guess you don't. <laughs> Jesus made disciples. How many know that Jesus came and he won souls and he made disciples, right? I mean, that's what he did, right? Why did he make disciples? So that somebody else would win souls when he wasn't around. Amen? Because you know what we do? Oh, Eric will go feed the poor. I don't have to. Seth will go reach souls. I don't have to. It's not my job. Well, do you look like Jesus or not? Well, you don't when you're not doing his job. Okay, I know y'all getting mad. <laughs> y'all okay? Maybe what I'm saying is a solution to sin in your life. Maybe what I'm saying is a solution to the pain in your life. Maybe what I'm saying is a solution to jealousy and envy of, the others, of other people in your life. Maybe what I'm saying is a fire that will come inside of you when you decide, I want to do the works of Jesus because he said, greater works will you do because I go to the Father. 
the vision of Jesus is not that I saw him. It's that I saw him and I decided to be like him. Amen. Can y'all give him a praise if you're feeling that? We're almost done. We're almost done. You know I'm setting you up because I, we, we actually have a, something to do. We're going to actually do 10 weeks of, of leadership for small groups. We have already chosen uh, eight different small groups that are going to be launched, or seven or eight. And we're going to train them for 10 to 12 weeks on how to host small groups. And we're going to release them like a wild army setting the fields on fire. You know that Samson tied foxes' tails together, set their, set their tails on fire, and he sent them to the Philistines' uh, crops, and the foxes set the whole Philistines' crops on fire. You know what that is, right? That's people working in unity, carrying the fire of God to destroy the work of the devil. Man, somebody give God a praise, man. I love it. I love this. So can we do no the next number? I don't know what it is, but I'll see it if you put it real big. Jesus' vision was to seek and to save that which is lost and to make disciples. I thought I went past that. Is that where we're at? Man, I got issues. Okay, you ready? Luke 19, 10. Can y'all say it with me? Ready, set. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen? Salvation and mentoring were the primary goal of Jesus. Am I wrong? I don't care if you sing songs. I don't care if you rap. I don't care if you play the spoons. I don't care if you tag graffiti on the side of the bridge and that's your calling. Your primary calling is what? It's the lost disciples. You can't find anything different in the Bible. Well, Moses said that the people, we were talking about this earlier, Moses said that the people, the children of Israel, their, their only reason for coming out of Egypt was to worship. Why? Because they didn't know God. Well, what do you do after you worship? Then you take the God you know and you give them to somebody else. Okay, y'all getting quiet. I don't know if I, did I strike a nerve? I'm <laughs> just playing. Do the next verse. Matthew, ready, set, hut. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Somebody shout, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Come on in your bathtub, in your front yard, in your ditch. I don't care. Baptize somebody. Get a hold of somebody. Get involved with somebody else's life. Amen. Therefore, make disciples of all nations. I don't care if they're black, yellow, brown, green. It might be an alien. Get them saved. Amen. Oh, Biden, little man, it's okay. Baptizing them in the name say, of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can somebody give God a mighty shout of praise? <laughs> your prayer, your prayer life is important, amen, because you're going to bring people to Jesus, amen. Number five, let's go. A person, wow, come, I like this one. Y'all are going to like this. If you're Cajun, you'll like this. A person that burns with the vision of Jesus is dangerous to the devil. The strength that God gives with vision is limitless. I'm going to tell you, is that right? Is that right? Samson was limitless in his strength. God preached this to me on a job site about Samson. Samson was limitless in his strength as long as he had God's vision. Am I right? Look, go to Judges. Check it out. I love this. My God. Thank you, Father. Let's stop and pray. Father, give us the revelation of power. Give us the revelation of strength. Give us the revelation of power, God, I pray right now. Somebody say with me. Then Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heap upon heaps. With the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. Somebody give God a praise. Man, that's crazy talk, man. That's crazy talk. You ever seen some UFC fight? I mean, this dude was like straight ninja fired. I don't know. But he couldn't be stopped. I mean, he just took that. Can you just imagine? He just like all the Philistines, the, the armies of the, the enemies of Israel that made Israel cower. But this one guy, this one Jedi Knight. No, I'm kidding. This one guy couldn't be stopped, man. Somebody shout limitless. Yeah. How many think maybe God was trying to show you that your strength can be limitless as long as you have the vision of God? Okay, I haven't convinced y'all yet. How many of the Delilah would sleep with Samson to destroy him? What's going on, man, in your sexual life? Amen. Delilah would seek, would sleep with, would seek to sleep with Samson to suck his strength out of him. Amen. Judges, let's go to Judges, 16, 19. Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees. Actually, the Bible says she had his head in her lap. That ain't, I mean, that ain't PG. Say with me, lust. Come on, we all did with it. I, I feel when I say it, people are like, <sighs> I'm melting. <laughs> she lulled him to sleep on her knees. And called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. Well, your girlfriend started tormenting you. Somebody came with a demon. Amen. Demons torment people. Come on, somebody. What's your Delilah? Is it social media? 
Is it a substance? Is it a boyfriend or a girlfriend? I'm sorry, I'm getting serious with somebody right now. What is your Delilah? Is it greed for money? Is it bitterness, something you don't want to let go of? Is it unforgiveness? What is your Delilah? What's sucking the vision of God out of you? What's sucking the life out of you? What's cutting your hair? When Samson disobeyed God, they put out his eyes. Somebody say vision. Did you realize that when Samson disobeyed God, they put out his eyes? Do you realize what, what God was saying? Your vision, your power comes from your eyes. Your vision, the Holy Spirit preached this message to me. Your vision comes from your, your strength comes from your vision. How strong are you? Do you, do you have a manifestation of the strength of God in your life? Or are you weak and, and running and hiding and cowering? How many want the revelation of the strength of God? Come on. Put the last judge of scripture up. Watch this. Here we go. And I can't finish it. I ought to do it on Sunday. Say with me, then the Philistines took him, put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with the bronze fetters, and he became a grinder in a prison. How many Christians are prisoners? How many people got out of prison and are in prison inside themselves? Come on, because you got Delilah in your life. Come on. And you, you're being tormented. Amen. And you're being bound. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody's going to go through deliverance tonight. Your strength comes from your vision. People perish for lack of vision. Vision is so important that because it's dangerous to the devil. Amen. Do y'all got a couple more minutes? Should I do this? Number six, if you feel like your vision has been lost, turn to God through prayer and he can restore you. Man, somebody give God a praise if you feel like what I'm saying. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. There's nobody that hasn't sinned in some kind of way. That say, everybody's done the same stuff, man. Only some of us have to get the courage to get back up and keep on fighting because we know what's right and we know what's wrong. Amen? Come on, guys. People are going to go to hell if Christians don't get up and fight. Somebody said, I don't want to fight. Well, then you don't care about nobody but yourself. You ready? Judges 16, 27. You ready? Now the temple was full of men and women, and the lords of the Philistines were there. God, <laughs> Y'all realize what was fixing to happen, right? All the kings, all the lords, all the leadership, the head of the snake was there. Now the temple was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women, but it wasn't just that it was people. It was the leadership of the enemy. Here it goes. About 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody say Samson prayed. Samson called to the Lord saying, oh, Lord, remember me. I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. My God, somebody give God a shout of praise. <laughs> yeah. Go to the next verse. Watch this. Do we have the next verse? Say it with me. Oh, God. That I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines by my, for my two eyes. See the vision? See it? And Samson took hold of two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Come on, go to the next one. Watch this. And he pushed with all his might. How many of sometimes you need to push in your prayer? Don't be a wiener in your prayer. Come on, push, push. Come on, push. Get something done. Oh, I knocked and nobody answered. Well, keep on knocking. Is it important to you? Is God valuable to you? Do you want to get the devil off of your back? Then Jesus said the kingdom of God is showing up and people are pressing into it. Amen. And he pushed with all of his might, and the temple fell on the lords and the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his entire life. Somebody give God a mighty shout of praise. It's dangerous to the devil. Your vision is dangerous to the enemy. The enemy wants to come in like flashing his teeth. You ain't no lion. You're a pussycat. My God is a lion. My God is a lion. The devil is like a lion, but my God is the lion. Somebody give God a mighty shout of praise. Yeah. Can we get the worship team to come up? And I want to pray with you. If the devil's breathing down your neck and you feel like you lost your vision and you feel like you, your prayer life has gone to crud, how many want to kind of revive that tonight? And listen, I'm going to tell you what. We're going to be praying tomorrow at 7 p.m., Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then uh, we're going to be on vacation for a week. But we might get, we're, we're going to figure out how to get more prayer in the house of God. But how many would like to do a faith experiment? 
I'm just, I'm just saying. And just try to come pray with us at 7 p.m. That We get off work. Me and a lot of the guys work in the sun. I like it. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I hate it sometimes. But we come anyway. And we're like, just take a shower, run to the church house. Come on. We're going to move the White House from the church house. Amen. How many would pray with me? Now, watch this. Can I give you an application for this? It's Romans 12, 11 through 12. Not lagging in diligence. Somebody say, not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Number one, say it with me. And we were praying. So how many know that? So we are praying here tomorrow through Saturday. Amen. How many want to try to show up and pray with us? And I know, Eric, you may not be able to. Oh, you know what? This Saturday is the blessing train. With Eric. So see Eric if you want to go feed the homeless this Saturday. Amen. I'm glad I didn't forget that. And I understand, Eric, you may not be able to be there because you're working on your church. That's okay. How many are excited about Eric and Juanita's church? Come on. We're going to see that church launch pretty soon in August. We're going to have an ordination service for them. That's going to be, y'all don't want to miss that. It's going to be the 30th. A couple of weeks from now, we're going to have a prophet coming from Florida to help us with an ordination service. It's going to be fire, man. Amen. So can I give you guys a way? How can you apply this message? You ready? Show up to the Sunday services. Show up to church. Amen. I'm talking to the choir because y'all are actually here. <laughs> if you're watching from the internet, just show up. Amen. Because our, our Sunday service, we, want, we reach souls through our services. But how many know that we make disciples through the small groups? Get in the small group. We're going to launch eight new ones. And if you're not a leader of a small group, help another small group. Amen. And lastly, take action by getting on one of the teams. We have a newly forming evangelism team with Seth that's going to be going out and partnering with Donna uh, Wells and my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, Wells of Agape. And we're going to do all kinds of stuff. Amen? How many want to do something for God? Get on the team. Get on one of the small groups. Be in the services. Amen? Help us to win souls. Amen? Can we go ahead and stand up and we're going to pray out of this thing? Can, can the ushers come forward? And we're going to go ahead and uh, do this scripture right here. Romans 12. I'll put about 35 verses up for offering. <laughs> it's not funny, Kyle. All right, y'all ready? Set. Can y'all read it with me? Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Man, we could drop the mic right now and go home on that right there. Because the world will be like, you don't love me if you don't tell me what I want to hear. Okay, y'all ain't into it yet. Okay, so it says, let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, and cling to what is good. Can somebody give Jesus a hand? <laughs> be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Come on. In honor, giving preference to one another. Man, is that, a, is that a, not an amazing offering scripture? All right. <laughs> not lagging in diligence. Come on. Somebody shout diligence. Here's where I feel the Lord, okay? So I wanted to speak the same verse for offering is kind of that we're going to use also in the message. Say so it with me, not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit. Come on, how many want to be fervent in spirit? Or do you want to have a, a six-cylinder engine with only one piston firing? And you're like, pff, pff, pff. you're all screwed up spiritually because your heart's misfiring, amen? But how many want to have that V12 engine on the inside under the hood? you got some power going on, some power, amen, in your emotions, in your mind, in your will, mind, will, and emotions. Come on, when you start preaching Bible stuff, it, it, it might sound weird to somebody. But do you know that when I first got saved, I would drive down the road, and, 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 I, would, and I had this old hoopty car with four Maypop tires on it. And I, and the Lord, and I would see like, a, like I would be going to Dallas to Bible school. I would see like a Lamborghini or something crazy pass me by. And the Lord would say, you, you know, I'm going to make your soul like that car. And I didn't understand what he was saying. I, how, how many know what he said? Because you can, you can drive by in a nice car and get out and be all jacked up from the neck up. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, I'm talking to the wrong people. I'll get on this side. <laughs> I mean, you can have the nicest car in the world and get out and really be jacked up on the inside. <laughs> Amen? I'd rather drive a hoopty and be fired up on the inside and shining with Jesus on the inside. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? So fresh and so clean. How many want to be clean on the inside? Somebody say fervent in spirit. This is just the offering message. Be fervent in spirit. How many want to be fired up in your spirit? Somebody shout, serving the Lord. Come on. Rejoicing in hope. Somebody said, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't get loud. Well, we do. Amen. Because we're biblical Christians. Amen. How can you rejoice without being loud? Well, they didn't do that in my church. Well, your church isn't biblical. I'm sorry to break it to you that not everybody that does church does church in a biblical way. Y'all getting caught. Watch. Say it with me. Rejoicing in hope. 
I say let's bring the church back to the Bible. Amen? Come on, I'm serious, man. Rejoicing in hope. How many would rejoice? How many could rejoice right now because of the hope? Well, you're talking about hope. You're talking about an expectation of something good to happen, something good to happen. Have you ever been in the state of your mind where you're like, you know you're kind of screwing up, and you're like, you kind of expect wrath? Has it ever happened to you? You kind of expect something bad to happen. Has it ever happened to you? Sometimes, even as a Christian, the devil can get on your back, and you can, something could be wrong, and somehow you can't explain it, but you're, expecting, you're not expecting something good to happen. How many of the gobbles have put a hope of glory on the inside of you so that you're looking for something good, something amazing is going to happen in your future? How many want to be that person rejoicing in hope? Come on, patient in tribulation. Anybody going through something? Come on, you ever been in a struggle yet? Come on, if you ever, Jesus didn't save you from the battle. He saved you for the battle, amen? Be patient in tribulation, continuing steadfast in prayer. Somebody say steadfast in prayer. And I'm about to release you. I know y'all are getting tired of me talking, amen? But how many know that if you're not, if you're not steadfast in prayer, you're going to misfire, you're going to mess up, you're going to fall apart? How many believe that you need to be content, consistent in prayer? How many really believe that? I'm telling you, man, you should, a, a Christian ought to be 30 minutes to an hour in prayer. Now, I'd like to see, I'm curious as to what people think when I say that. Like, oh my God, you mean I'm supposed to pray? <laughs> what would happen to you? If you, I, I, I dare you, what would happen to you if you had 30 minutes to an hour to pray to God every single day? What would happen? What would happen to you? Say it with me, steadfast in prayer. Here it is, distributing to the needs of the saints. Say it with me, given to hospitality. How many know that if we would be steadfast in prayer and give, our whole life would be radically altered? Amen? Can somebody give God a praise for that? That was just an excuse to say the same verse that we're going to say again in a minute. Amen. So I thank God for the givers and, and passion church. Thank God for tithers. I am a tither. I am a giver to this church. I believe in this church. I believe in it. And I believe that if you really care about something, you put your money behind it. Amen. We're not trying to figure out how to give less. We're trying to figure out how to give more. How many know that if you, put a, if you pin a vision to your money, your money will grow? Money, you know, the Bible said that greed takes away the life of its owner. I remember when I was so stingy, man, I didn't want to come off of anything. You know what I mean? But I remember when God liberated that from me. And now he's showing us how to start different businesses. And I, we have two streams of income. We're about to have three. Is that, is that shock anybody? Well, you're supposed to be a pastor. Paul, the apostle, was a tent maker. He had a business. He said, by my own hands, I supplied my own needs and those with me. How many of the God's raising up Christian business people? I'm serious, man. I'm serious. So... There's an area that God wants to liberate you in the area of your finances. Amen. I'm going to pray for you, then I'm going to release you. Father, we pray right now, Deuteronomy 8.18, that you would give power to create wealth, God. That in this house, God, if we see a need, Lord, we, ha we have something to give to it, God. That you, uh, you would bless us abundantly and give us power to create wealth. We decree Proverbs 10.22, that the Lord makes rich and he adds, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. How many would say it with me? Proverbs 10.22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he has no sorrow to it some of y'all got scared to quote the bible i think that a demon of poverty is climbing on somebody right now can i meddle a little bit how many know that if you're scared to say something the bible said there's something ain't right okay i'm gonna leave y'all alone <laughs> can we all quote proverbs 10 22 say it. the blessing of the lord makes one rich are you feeling kind of funny when you say that right now are you feeling kind of scared to say that right I'm telling you guys say with me the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it somebody ought to give God a radical shout of praise man we're not ashamed of the gospel and we're not ashamed of the Bible either amen we're gonna release the ushers to pick up the offering children you can come preteens teens you can give and go we love you we worship Love you, Lord.